Hello to everyone. To the second session with Slenart. I see that you, some of you wanted to dance. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to repeat myself because all of you probably mostly, I see that the colleagues have already um, joined the session, the first session. So I just would like to, to recall a bit that the first session was focused on physical aspect of your body and you've got a lot of exercises, tips and tricks from Elena. It was great, you enjoyed a lot. I, I received a lot of uh, um, uh, very positive uh, feedbacks. And today, and I today would like to introduce to you Elena for the second session, which will be about the concentration. So we have to be aware of what is the concentration, what is to, to be focused on. And of course, today it will be a, a general session. And if you want to work really on that, we will organize the session in September with Lena. This is a good news that Lena accepted our <laughs> offer. So uh, the second uh, thing that I would like just to tell you that we are going to um, record all sessions. So if you don't want to be visible, just you switch on. But what we would like, we, we would like to have you uh, with the camera on because it's the time to be connected, to see each other and to really see how it works. So uh, thank you very much. And now I will give the floor to Leonard. Please, Leonard. Hello, everyone. Give me a little higher here. Okay, great. For those of us who have the cameras on, for those of you, those of us who don't, you can use the reaction button on the right hand side on the lower uh, brace uh, uh, bar there. Great, super. How is everyone feeling today? Thumbs up, like this, like this. Somewhat okay. Some of us are giving a head nod there. Okay, super. Let's see. Okay, so we have uh, eighty-seven people. Wow uh on online here it's uh, fabulous to see everyone for those of us who are joining again after yesterday um welcome back for those of us who are joining for the first time welcome and uh today as maria mentioned we're talking about focus i'm excited about today today's going to be a little bit less energetic uh, a little bit a little bit more thoughtful um i'm not going to spend a lot of time on theory um as Maria mentioned, it's gonna be more just experimenting and asking ourselves questions, okay? So uh, today's about focus, where we are, focus is for me, where we permit ourselves to spend our time and energy. Focus is for me, where we permit ourselves to spend our time and our energy. That's how we're gonna look at focus today. Just a recap of the, of the whole sort of four session um, uh, program we're simply going to practice and experience hacks, tips and tricks that can uh, help us change our physical, our mental and our, our emotional states and well-being um, at work. Uh, my wish is that, um, that this shapes your way of thinking, that you can think about you, about your energy, about your resilience and your self-image. Huh? What is your self-image? We might go into that on the last session. I think it's on Monday. Um, basically, uh, creating your comfort yourself has nothing to do with comfort. As I mentioned uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday, it's about inspiring ourselves to cultivate best practices, best personal practices for ourselves. It's recognizing our personal power, our personal autonomy. Um, power is our ability to act. Huh? So how can I act within the constraints of the environment, of the times, of the conditions in which I'm working in, of my workload, how can I still act? How can I find that control over myself, yeah? And over the things that I do, so that I'm not stressed, so that I can feel exuberant and, and uplifted while I'm working. So it's kind of like a paradox, isn't it? Um, underlining uh, everything that I'm doing in these programs is the simple um, three-step principle. Whatever I do, I practice and cultivate over time. And whatever I practice and cultivate over time, 
I get results, positive and negative results. So that implies that it's up to me to look at my results and see, well, there's more negative than positive here. Let me go back and uh, tweak what, what I've been practicing, what I've been doing with me and my time and my energy and my focus, my concentration, so that I can get better results. The burden of responsibility is mine. The burden of responsibility is mine. Yes, that means effort. It means that you know we have to put a lot of effort in there, maybe more than we would normally do, but also it means the rewards. We get the rewards from that as well. And by the way, has anyone got any rewards without making a little bit of effort? You can raise your hand. Maybe we have, or maybe like my mom has given me rewards. I didn't have to do anything for it, okay? So uh, the idea is, you know, when you've done your studies, when you've passed your examinations, whether it's at university or, or here with the episode, whatever the things that you have to pass to go to the next level of your profession, professionalism, your career, you have to go through a learning curve. And the learning curve sometimes is uncomfortable. So it's nothing about comfort here. We're all about striving for something that is better, better than what we have, seeing things which are not just in front of us, but seeing with our mind's eye and like, okay, what would I like? What would I want? How would I like to relate to people? How would I like to contribute? How would I like to grow as a person? What things for me are important? What do I need to make my, my, my life today more diverse, more, more, more varied, more freedom? Or what do I need to have more stability? These kinds of questions we ask ourselves indirectly through what we do today and the other days as well. Okay. So um, let me move on then. Um, I was going to start with a quote. Let's see. Yeah, we'll start with this quote. It's from Alvin Toffler, who's a futurist. Um, I think he's, he's passed away already in the United States and a businessman. And he said, the illiterate of the 21st century will not be those who cannot read or write, but those who cannot learn, unlearn, and relearn. So for me, that makes sense because it means, you know, as I mentioned before, I was a dancer. It's all about learning, unlearning, and relearning. A new style, a new, a new choreographer, a new, new conditions. You're dancing on stage, you're dancing in an auditorium, you're dancing on, on stones. So it's, it's about being adaptable, about being flexible, and finding out where, where are my resources and uh, what is my resourcefulness. Yeah? Okay, so I've... I've I keep on going on about this, but okay, I'm, I'm not going to preach anymore. Um, before we dive in, though, um, I'd like to know, if, write in the chat, what did you take away from the last session? For those of us who were there in the last session, what did you take away? What one thing or what priority, what, what one notion or what were you inspired by? Just share that in the chat and uh, I'll pull up the chat so I can read it. Uh, maybe I should do it this way like this. Here we go. Um, um, okay, that doesn't work like this, okay, right, chat, okay. Small movements, big impacts, uh, keep moving, uh, motivation, body, mind, connection, okay. Drink up one and a half liters of water at least a day. <coughs> Excuse me, exercise gives energy, okay. Moving keeps, gives energy, moving our body, uh, lifts our moods because we get uh, to, because uh, we forget to, yes, okay. <laughs> uh, um, do small things regularly. Yes, find time to disconnect. Absolutely, recover. Disconnection is recovery as well. Huh? You recover from what we've been doing. The exercises are very good. I remembered how important physical uh, activities are, are important. I miss yoga and Pilates. Well, if you miss it, how motivated are you to move towards that goal again? Are we, are we allowing, I'm going to go into this a little bit as well, are we allowing exter external things to influence, influence us more than we can influence our external environment yeah um yoga one can do at home you don't need a big space to do yoga huh? i'm trying to sort of like give you another perspective on things try to move more time to take care about yourself of body and mind okay okay sitting is a smoking of our age <laughs> certainly is uh dignifying dignified position yes indeed dignified position okay so uh let them come in. The other question I have uh, is, um, what will you put into action? What will you do? Okay, these are thoughts and, and perhaps feelings and what you took away. But what, what concrete steps, what commitments will you make? 
What commitment will you make? Chat that in. And if it's no commitment, then say it, no commitment. Uh, then it's clear for you and it's clear, you know, that, that, that we can see that, you know, we're creatures of, of comfort and we like our comfort zone and, and it's good to hear about things and, you know, and to listen to things. But uh, as far as making that, that, that step to go into doing something about it is a whole new kettle of fish. And we're going to talk about that, especially in the last session about uh, drive and motivation. Right? Okay, let me just read here, then we'll move on. Um, I will move more. I will read emails in the morning while standing. Wow, planning to do the exercise late uh, time with my colleagues during the lunch break. Okay, uh, regularly. Okay, plan uh, in me time to uh, into agenda to ensure that I take the time. Absolutely, it's very good that. When I'm stressed, normally I want to spend time in physical activities. Okay, that's very good. Uh, I need to commit to taking 10 minutes of exercise a day. 10 minutes, well, that's fantastic. This is a micro habit, yeah. This is very good, Leticia. Uh, the way I'm forgetting for the bad things and uh, the way of forgetting the bad things and, be, and being in that depressed sort of mode, yes. Go to the office more often, stand, take breaks. Okay, ride the bike. Okay, get up from my chair more often. All right, then that's what we're gonna do straight away. <laughs> <laughs> is get up from our chair more often. Let's do that right now. I invite everyone to stand up, please. And just shake the body out a little bit. Come on. I'm standing already. Come on. Shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out, shake it out. Okay, one of the exercises uh, yesterday or the day before yesterday was the condor. Can we, do you remember this? Do you remember this exercise? Yeah? Right. So just lift the arms up. Ah. Oh. Stretch up, open the armpits and then allow the hands to flow downwards, yeah. I like doing this when I'm bending my knees, that gives me a little extra sort of feeling of mobility in my body. and allows my spine just to open up a little bit more. Yes, very good. And then up again, breathing in. You can look up to the ceiling as well and allow the arms to open, open and out, right? And now we're gonna add our imagination as well. How about this? Closing the eyes, lifting, arms up and just imagine you're you're at 20,000 feet with with the with the condors yeah and you can see the land below you it's a blue blue sky clear blue warm day huh? yeah allow the arms to open be free yeah uh, yes beautiful 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 and relax now keep the arms sorry keep the arms at a horizontal level and then stretch the arms even wider you know, they have like a three meter wingspan, these, uh, these condors, yeah? And as you do, just tilt on one side, just slightly. It's a little bit of an exercise. We're tilting, so we're not turning. We're yes, yeah, gently, gently, gently. Very gently, very, not from the waist, just from the upper body. Just from the upper body. Yeah. It's almost like, a, you know, how you would glide in the sky if it were possible. And then lower the arms, keeping the sternum uh, lifted. Okay. Okay. Just chat in how that felt for you. Chat in how that felt and be honest. If it didn't feel, feel good, then say, well, it didn't feel good. I was hurting. My back was hurting. Leonard, stop this immediately. Speak your truth. This is what we do. This is a virtual space and it's a space, uh, where we can, where I'm permitting myself to do it. So please go ahead. Feel free to do that. For some reason, my chat doesn't come up um, on a big window, but I'll have a look as uh, um, stiff. Okay, great. Felt it in my arms. Yes, so good. All right, great. Painful in the arms. Indeed, it works on the uh, deltoid muscle. Um, um, smile, take my space. Sounds good. Yes, take your space. That also talks about limitations and boundaries. Mm. Very interesting, huh? Maybe um, tomorrow we're talking about emotional side, about connecting with people. We can cover that. Uh, maybe, maybe if you have time. Pain in my arms, light, free, felt great. Free my mind, but painful body. Okay, oh, this is very interesting. It's a beautiful phrase. I'm free my mind, but my body is my body and I'm tethered to the earth, apparently. Listen, we are spiritual beings with an intellect, having a physical experience. We're spiritual beings with an intellect living in a body, living in this envelope. And uh, yeah, we have to take care of it. But we're much, we're much bigger than this. We're much greater than this. Um, will I get to talk about this more? Maybe on, maybe on Monday. 
about imagination, about this higher faculty that we have as human beings, which separates us from the animals, which separates us from the primates. What we have achieved, for example, over, over the centuries um, is incredible. And the animals or, or our primates and all the other animals have stayed where they are because they don't have this higher faculty, according to some, some schools of thought. Huh? Up, uplifting light, hands heavy when arms stay horizontal. Yes, indeed. It takes a little bit of um, um, yeah, strength um, from, from your back. Yeah? Okay. Hands heavy when arms stay horizontal. Okay. Up, up a bit. Um, stretching makes me feel great. Okay, super. Great. So now we're there. Let's take a dignified position sitting up. Let's not relax so quickly. Okay. We are listening, but we're listening attentively. And by the way, I would like you in this session to listen with one ear to what I'm saying and what I'm asking you and the other ear to listen to yourself and ask yourself the question, is this me? Or what part of me is this? It's a better question perhaps. And then further would be, well, how can I overcome this? We are full of resources. We're full of good ideas, but do we access those ideas? Okay, and that's our resourcefulness, yeah? Okay, so let's move on. Um, by the way, um, okay, I'll just move on with this. I think this is the best way to do it. This is called unwrap in seven. Unwrap in seven, okay? So we're ready to play this game. It's a little game. Unwrap in seven, okay? And so pay attention. Follow me. One, do what I do. One, Right in front of the camera so I can see your hand. Right in front of, yes, one, two, three, four, five. Now keep the left thumb over the right thumb. The left thumb over the right thumb. Six, seven. Where were you focusing? Where were you focusing? How good is your focus? How well do we focus? And what results do we get from our focus? That's the question I wanna ask you. Shall we do, shall we do this again? Uh, some people are like, yeah, okay, Leonard, what are you trying to get at now? Okay, one more time. One, okay, here we go. Two, unwrap in seven. Three, four, Five. Okay, I'm seeing some people with, with the, <laughs> the left thumb over the right, okay? Five, six point seven. If you really wanna know how this is done, it's all about focus, huh? It's just, I'm just, it's a little game here, a little bit of a tease. When we're focusing on the right thing, we get the right results. When we're focusing on the right thing, we get the right results. If you want to know the secret, I'll, I'll let you know. Perhaps you have to write me an email, perhaps, uh, because we don't have time to go through it now. It's a whole new uh, <laughs> technique. Okay, so is it possible? Can we focus on two things at once? That's my question to you. No, some people say, no, I see some heads shaking. No, no, we can't, we can't, we can't. No, yes, Susan says, yes. Not man, no man. Michelle, yes, difficult. Ulrika says difficult, maybe multitasking. Hey, no, multitasking is a liar. We only multitask very, um, very badly. We can concentrate on two things at the same time. We can concentrate on two things at the same time, but very badly, but very badly. I mean, we can walk, we can talk, we can breathe at the same time, but that's not multitasking. Multitasking is focusing and concentrating. You know, we took us uh, how many uh, months to start walking? Huh? Breathing happened automatically anyway, <laughs> without us thinking about it. Oh, huh? uh, you know, we can do these things automatically. We can perhaps wash the dishes and, and, and speak at the same time. Well, we, how many times have we washed the dishes, dishes? And how many times have we spoken to someone? So we can do this because it's automatic. But to focus on, especially on something new, we can do it, but it's very difficult. One last exercise. Here we go. Put the hand, did we do this yesterday? I'm not quite sure. Put the hand in front of, you, of your face and look at your thumbnail. 
hand in front of you. Really concentrate now on your thumbnail, yeah? What happens to the surrounding area? What happens? Goes blurry. Linda's giving me this, it's going blurry, blurry. Okay, is that true? Everyone can like nod your head. Okay, okay. Now put the hand in front of your face again and then focus on the surrounding area. What happens to your hand? Victoria, what happens to your hand as you focus on the surrounding area? I can't hear you. Disappearing. It gets... Okay, yeah, you forget. Okay, still there, vanishes, thumbs. So what does this tell us about our brains? What does this tell us about how our brains work? You can write it in the chat. What does this tell us about how our brains work? How our body, how our system works? What does it tell us? Like a camera, okay, selecting, concentrating on one thing at a time. Focus one at a time, right? Uh, see what you want to see and what you want to pay attention to, absolutely. One important thing at a time, select it. Yes, indeed, very selective. We can see clearly one thing at a time, concentrate on one thing at a time, adapt, hides away the unnecessary information. Absolutely, absolutely. Like, can you, you know, if I don't say it, you won't notice it, right? I'll say it. You can see your nose. <laughs> now you can see it. The brain basically says to, says to you, well, it's not important. It's not life-threatening. It doesn't, you know, threaten our survival. Take it out of our vision. There's a book called, um, I forgot the name of the authors now, uh, John Greenwald and uh, um, Banerjee, I think her last name is. Uh, they were, they're professors or, or they, they went, yeah, they're professors at Harvard and it's about uh, the hidden blind spots. Um, and it's very good about unconscious biases, but they have an exercise in the first few pages, I believe, where you can see where your blind spot is by, by bringing the book closer to your eyes and then taking it away. At a certain point, you don't see it anymore. And then you see it again, it reappears. And, you're, and what's interesting is that your mind um, replaces the lines. There's, there should be a space where you don't see something, but no, the, 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 the brain, the eyes, replace it with, with, the, with the scenery that's there. Have a look at it. It's a very autofocused brain. Okay, it's very interesting. Okay, so we've understood this now. We've understood that um, we can only focus on one thing, concentrate on one thing at a time. Okay, so write this down. Whenever we focus on something, we give that thing energy. Whenever we focus on something, we give that thing energy. Meaning what? We give it our energy. We give it meaning. That thing has meaning to us. And we give importance to that. Yeah? We value that. We put that thing in value when we focus on it. Whatever we give energy to, that thing grows. So whatever we focus our mind on, whether it's a visual focus or our mind, we give that thing, whatever it is, energy. We give it meaning. It has some meaning for us. And we give it importance. It goes higher in value. Like I focus on my thumbnail. That's the most important thing. It becomes clear to me what it is. I can see the shape. I see the, uh, the lines. I can see where I'm missing some calcium. Huh? And the rest of it is blurry. Yeah? So I'm giving that the most important value. Okay? But also, whatever we give energy to, that thing grows. So say, for example, let's have an example here. So say, for example, um, um, <laughs> we worry about something. Well, that thing is growing for us. It's becoming very important. And when people are stuck in, in certain issues uh, with uh, with life or with a certain part of their life well they're focusing on it wherever focus goes energy flows and it grows wherever focus goes energy flows and it grows so that's something a principle that i think we should look at and you know don't believe me try it for yourself for example another question would be when you woke up this morning what was the first thing you thought about what was the first thing that you thought about when you woke up this morning Okay, 
you wrote that down or you thought about it. You have a mental picture of what you were thinking about. Okay, fine. Now, did that thought, did that focus give you energy? Did it empower you? Did it make you feel, wow, I'm ready? Or did it make you feel, oh, God. Positive or negative? One of the two. Which was more important? How did it affect you? And those feelings that it gave you, oh, well, it may say, for example, it gave you a negative feeling, not too negative, just maybe something, oh, yeah, oh, okay. How much did that give you, how, how, what, what potential did you have from that feeling? Um, motivation is on Monday, I keep on saying it. When we have a feeling, it gives us a certain framework, a certain um, ability, potential to act, yeah? So if we're feeling, for example, if you were like uh, having a lot of work on your table, on your office table, office table, and um, you had more, some, you know, your boss called, say, okay, I'm sorry, Leonard, we have to give you some more work. I'm like, okay, great, no problem, yeah, it's fine. Put down the phone. And you think about, oh my God, all the things that I have to do and all the things that, you know, so you're focusing on your work. You're fo focusing on the amount of work you have to do with the limited amount of time. You have a feeling of, oh my God, well, how, how am I gonna do this? And then you have the feeling, then you have the thought, okay? How did that give you enough? How did it give you energy to do the work that you had to do? Did it, did it give you energy or did it take it away? Uh, in uh, kinesiology, we say, uh, was it uh, bio, biogenic? Did it give you like, was it bio, en, en français, c'est biogenic or biocidic? Did it take away energy? It's a good thing to ask yourself. Does this, what I'm focusing on, does this empower me or does it make me feel even more insecure? anxious, annoyed, frustrated, frustrated, yeah? It's good to ask yourself that question because what are you doing when you ask yourself that question? You're taking a step back and you're beginning to realize that, well, you know, my, my patterns, my, the, the habits I have, the thought habits that I entertain and that I practice every day and I get results from, it's not very helpful for me. So I have to download the new system, download the latest version of Windows, Windows 97, wonderful. It's old. Let's move up. Let's go for the, another, uh, um, the highest level. Yeah. Another thing I want to add was that um, meaning gives us feelings and thoughts. And this frames and guides, I mentioned that frames and guides our actions. So we're more capable of doing something to overcome obstacles if we focus on it in a different way. And that's important to know. Yeah. Are there any questions? Let me see, I'm reading the, the chat now, just before we want to go to sleep. Okay, positive but fades away during the day. Okay, well, that's okay. Have a positive but fades away during the day. Okay, so how do you hold on to that notion? How do you hold on to that thought, that positive thought? Or how do you make it even better? How do you amplify it? The sun, open window, holidays in 10 days. <laughs> holidays in 10 days. That's very good. You visualize it, holidays in 10 days. Okay, that's good. What time is it? <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, great. So let's move on then. Now I'd like you to, to take a list, take of course your pen and paper out already, I assume. Um, the question is what things do we habitually focus on that are outside of our control? Write it in the first person. What things do I habitually focus on that are outside of my control? Not just in work, but in life. What things do I habitually focus on that are outside of my control? Write three of them down. Huh? Or if you can write more, write more. I'll give you a few minutes to do that. Or 30 seconds, a minute to do that. The weather, absolutely. Fantastic. You can chat it in as well after you've written it down. After you've written it down, you can chat it in. I focus on the weather. Lucky for us, the weather is good. <laughs> or maybe it's too hot. Some people are like, oh, God, it's too hot. Oh, my God, it's so hot. Oh, I wish it would be cool. I wish it, oh, I wish it would be hotter. Uh, the vaccines, okay, yeah. Oh, the vaccine, when is my time coming? Or, oh my God, I don't want a vaccine. Why do we have to, you know, we don't have to. It's, it's not legislation yet. <laughs> okay, oh my God, okay. Um, children, exams, their exams, my God. The character of a person, my God, they have such a bad character, you know, oh my God. Other people's happiness, I wish they would be happy. Oh, I wish they would be happy. I wish I can give them some happiness. I wish I found a way. Politics, oh my God, these people, what are they doing? Why can't they do it right? Why, why are they reacting and not planning ahead? Why are they just thinking about their career? I won't go into that. Constant, <laughs> constant changes. 
oh my God, you know what, by the way, there's one thing in life that's guaranteed or two things. The first thing is you're going to die. We're all going to die. And about, let's say, 70 years from now, we probably won't be here. Okay, that's one guarantee. The next guarantee is that everything will change. Everything will change. You will change your values, your beliefs. Everything about you will change. Everything about your environment will change. So that's a definite. So you better align yourself with it. With it. I mean, that's what I say to myself. Align yourself with the change, Leonard. Because, you know, what well, the Tibetans also say this. Um, they say something like, um, this too shall pass. Yeah? Everything will pass. Everything will pass. Children, behavior of other people, a reliability of new cars, global warming, construction of work. Oh, my God, it's getting on my nerves. I have to focus. HR policy. <laughs> oh, my God. We've, we, uh, I have learned. Not to do so. Oh, we have a yogi within our uh, presence here. Change what I can change and accept what I cannot. Wow, Sandra, wow, you should be standing where I'm standing. Repairs in the house. Okay, it's a practice. Um, Sandra's right. It's a, it, we practice. We have to practice this, whatever. We practice, we cultivate, get results. So look, the Dalai Lama had this experiment, um, speaking about Tibet now. Okay, so the Dalai Lama, I think it was in some kind of experiment with scientists researchers and they fired a gun behind him um and they sort of had you know the uh sensors on his head and all they saw was a beep <laughs> in his meditation why why well he's practicing that every day he does that that's his profession that's his living he lives for that so of course he's has a certain amount of uh perfection mastery to what he does so the question is what do i practice what do i practice and what am i what am i not what am i not happy with and how do i get to change that i'm going to read on very quickly then we'll move on i see that it's half hour already repairs in the house quality of tv programs <laughs> this is wonderful health care children's relationship emails quality of journalism mm, yeah all of this is things that we can't control okay how does it make us feel Next question would be, how does it make you feel? Secure, comfortable, condo, a condo, sorry. Does it make you feel expansive? Does it expand your awareness? Does it make you feel inspired? Does it make you dream? Does it make you, make you feel, wow, this possibility and this progress? Or does, is it contracting? Is it shrinking? Is it making you feel perhaps more fearful, more anxious, more worried? That's a good question to ask. Write the answer down for each of those things that you, you, you thought of, those three things. Shrinking, okay. Makes you want to go away and live in a hut in the woods. You know what? There's a problem with that scenario or that solution. Wherever you go, there you are. <laughs> Wherever you go, there you are. Um, with what's been happening in the world, you know, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. Does, I don't think we can escape it, but we can modify how we appreciate things or what we recognize, what we focus on. Look, we're hardwired for, um, to detect even the, the, the indication of danger. Our brains are hardwired for that. And this um, neocortex, this what separates us from animals, gives us the ability to, to take a step back and to think about things and to create new things, to imagine new things, to desire new things, to conjure things up in our mind and create it. That's why we can fly in planes. That's why we can you know, sail on boats across the world. That's why we can do all the things that perhaps animals can't do or haven't had the mental capacities to do, to perform. So we have to think about that. We, I think, believe. You know, I believe that um, we all have um, a gift, and the gift is here. It's our brain, and that the capacity of our, of our of our mind to consider other possibilities. Whether we exercise that or not is a different question. Okay, I always preach, but okay, let's let's move <laughs> move on. Okay, the last question would be: um, write a list of three things that you can focus on that empower you. Write a list of three things that when you focus on them, 
they empower you, they give you energy. Remember, wherever our focus goes, we give energy to that thing. So what can you focus on that empowers you, that gives you this energy back? Well, three things that, that not only empower you now, but empower you at work and in your life. Make it a big thing. Make it something that will, will never fail you. Will never fail you. Yeah? I'm serious about this. Make it something that won't fail. You focus on it, immediately better. Henry David Thoreau. <laughs> Very good, uh, Philippe. Uh, I know, but the planes are not our neighbor. Okay. Either to adapt to, to escape. Okay. Isolate myself. Okay. Physical exercise, exercising, listen to you. <laughs> thinking of a wonderful trip okay Medi never fail you uh, med meditation nature carelessness handcrafting traveling singing breathing okay nature you know what about thinking of, uh, of thinking of a beloved person thinking of my passion okay acting laughing eating together yeah why not my ability to bounce back yeah what what triggers your ability to bounce back daniela uh reading Family reading, walking, see, these are primal foods. Huh? These are, are what we nourish ourselves with. Um, one of us said something about, okay, complaining about the TV programs. Well, you know, we have a choice. I always tell people when I'm doing individual consultations, stand up and watch the TV. When we stand up, we're giving ourselves the possibility to walk away because we don't like what we're watching. When we sit down, we become passive. When we sit down, we become passive. We don't become, we're not whole because of the fact that we're not using our legs. We're resting. We're recovering and our subconscious mind is open to all kinds of influences. That's why we go to the theater, we go to cinemas, and we're crying, we're just seeing a screen with light shone on it, yeah? When we sit down, we are passively taking information in. Um, when we stand up, we, have, we, give, we give ourselves an opportunity, a choice to listen, to continue listening. And we're evaluating this all the time because it's tiring standing up or to walk away, or to change. Yeah? There's three ways to tackle a problem. Love it, leave it, um, change it. Love it, leave it, or change it. Wow, it's a blast from the past. Music, art, art, swimming, positive thinking, reading, music. Okay, so these are resources for you. These are things that you can do. But it starts here. The trigger starts here. And it, it starts with the motivation, of course. We'll talk about that later. I mean, another day. But it starts with you. Okay, sailing, oh my God, sailing, yeah. But just imagine yourself sailing. Um, just imagine yourself just sailing and there's the sea and there's the rock of, you know, there's the wind, there's the sails, there's the breeze, there's the sun, you're there. In psychology, they call it time travel. When we think about things of the past and we relive these emotions, yeah? We focus on the past and we relive these emotions or we focus on the future and we relive the anxiety. Huh? And sometimes it's not just yesterday, of course, it's, it's way back when. Yeah. So the idea is to, yes, accept all there is to accept. See and focus all for, on all there is to focus on. But then choose. Choose to focus on something because that thing gives you energy back. Rather than focusing on things which take energy away from you. Brenny Brown says things like this. I mean, talks about this in her book, Daring Greatly. Huh? Brenny Brown. Of course, we talk about uh, um, the being in the flow, being in the flow. I can't pronounce the name. Chizek uh, Mihaili. Uh, <laughs> but yes, indeed, the flow state. Flow state. What is flow state, by the way? Flow state is just being in a state of awareness um, and consciousness about you doing an activity and how good that feels. Yeah? It's the best way I can come up with an explanation um, for the moment, at least. Yeah. Okay, good. So now you have your answers. You have your three um, uh, uh, answers to the three questions. List the three things that habitually that you habitually focus on that don't give you energy. How does it feel? Second question. Third question is list three things that you can focus on that empower you. Okay. For the next seven minutes, I'm going to put everyone in a breakout room. 117 people. Uh, let's see now. Um, let's see if I do. Or eight, 12. You're going to be more or less three in a room, maybe two in a room. And uh, I'm going to create this now. And you're going to go and share your experience with other people, yeah, with your partners, with your, with your um, uh, um, 
colleagues. <laughs> there we go. Uh, let's see now. I'm going to take about seven minutes. So about roughly about two minutes to, to speak. Okay. Here we go. Bon voyage. And uh, we'll come back. We have a little debriefing and then we'll close.
Okay, good. How is that for everyone? Coming in back in the main room now. Okay, so just uh, type in the chat how, how, how that was for you. One or two words. Um, be honest, be honest. Let's start with honesty and, and then move on from there. Huh? How was that for you? Really nice, great, great exchange. Very interesting, inspiring. Okay, interesting. It didn't work, I'm very sorry. Nice, and, and okay, nice exchange, missed the task. Okay, don't worry, nice experience, nice to meet people. A technical problem, okay. I'm really sorry about that, nice exchange. But this is something you can do with yourself as well and just ask yourself the question, you know. Listen, okay, it's more difficult when you ask yourself the question. Really nice, nice to connect with someone un un unknown to the list. Okay, expand it, okay, comforting. I've met a great uh, colleague, okay, wonderful. What's the question? <laughs> yeah, nobody there. Okay, I'm really sorry, Muriel, I'm really sorry. Um, you know, okay, you know, some people are uh, just coming on for the call, maybe they're, I don't know, they want to hear some background noise or something and they don't want to engage. Okay, that's a fortune. Nice time. Um, same passion. Okay, so we find similarities. Huh? Sometimes you find similarities in people. Look, we're all human beings. We're all having experiences which are which involve positive and negative sides. Huh? Um, by the way, can you um, live, go through life without experiencing negative things? Is that possible? If you could, you think it's possible? What do you think about that? Yes or no? No, it's possible. Where your hardships are, that's where your, that's the end of the rainbow. Where your hardships are, the things that you fear the most. You know, the Tibetans, again, they say, lean in. Lean into the uncomfort. Yeah? Don't headbutt it, just lean in. Lean in. Because that's where the solution is. That's where the, the gold is found. That's where your treasure, your diamonds, that's where you see yourself as you are or as you should be, your higher self, huh? your best self. Hmm? That's where it is. So it's very important to think about that when, when dealing with, um, with challenges, our challenges at work or personal or, or everything. Exactly. Sandra again. Oh, my God. No, in everything negative, you could find perhaps something positive, some positive. Look, posit what's... Beauty is in, the, is in the eye of the beholder. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. Wherever you take yourself, with, ever, with whatever you take yourself with, you know, with all the baggage of your culture, education, the do's and don'ts of, of society, you take that with you where you go. And it's, not, it, you know, it's called the locus of control. You can look that up, the locus of control. It's a psychological tool where we can see how things are affecting us by the way we look at them. Are we at the effect of everything? Is everything impressing upon us? Are we the victim of the situation? You're only a victim once. And then it's up to you to become the pioneer, to be, you to be the one that, that is, is um, learning from the experience, from the hardship, and finding a person that guides you rather than being the victim, you know, the drama triangle, which is the victim, the persecutor, and the, uh, the one that uh, saves us, the savior. So it's very important to, to put yourself, to, to make that mental change. And it's a linguistic change as well, how you talk about yourself and how you see yourself. It comes down again to uh, self-image. Um, very good book, French, the Le Vertus de, de l'échec. Okay, absolutely. Okay, thanks Blondine for that. People can just uh, save their chat. I think you can do that. And you have that book as a reference as well. Okay, to finish up, one um, last thing I'd like to mention to you, I think it's just some tips and tricks. When we put on alpha music, I wanted to play some for you, but I won't spend time just disc jockeying and trying to get that so you can hear. When you play alpha music, it helps your concentration. It helps you get into the flow. Yeah. Um, it's, um, it's good for relaxing as well, but also for your improvement of memory. Yeah. Um, there's another um, author that I um, that is talks about athletes and how they focus on tasks, and um, I'll share this slide. Actually, I think that's the best thing I can do. Um, okay, it's this one. Okay, that was Alvin Toffler. 
Um, let's put this down a little bit. Yeah, this one here. So um, this is a, a, an author uh, called Hans Erberspeiser. Hans Erberspeiser, I'm gonna write it in the chat. Just some information if you like that. Uh, Hans Erberspeiser. Okay, and um, he basically trains athletes and um, says that basically when we focus on our task at hand, then we're focused. When we're distracted, and by the way, the biggest challenge is not to be distracted when you're focusing. That's the biggest challenge you'll ever have, not to, you know, not to focus. It's not to be, not to take, not your, no so that your focus doesn't get, get taken away from what you want to be focused on. Mm -hmm. And then when you think about, it should be like this, it is like that, then you're getting further away from your focus. You think about success and failure, even further away. The performance and consequences, if I do this, what will happen? And then who am I, what am I? You're even further away from, uh, what am I doing here? You're even further away from your focus. Uh, from your from what you want to be focusing on so it's very important to think about that you can take a snapshot uh, and I put the name in the chat so so you can uh, you can have a look at that I'm going to stop sharing now okay so I can see that time is is slowly running out uh, I would just like to leave you with another thought okay um, and the thought is this whatever we look at whatever we focus on we're looking at it through a lens yeah. And this lens is basically colored by our, our life story, our experience, our childhood, our relationship with other people, the relationships that we've seen around us when we were younger, um, our education, of course, and uh, all the, you know, the highs and lows of all that color our lenses. When we see something, we're looking at it through lenses. Now, for me, the biggest point that I would like to make now about these lenses that we look through automatically without even thinking about it, it's unconscious, our unconscious bias. Um, best thing, the one thing that I want to tell you about is are, just to question yourself, are you looking through whatever you're focusing on through the lens of lack, limitation, scarcity, fear and, and anxiety? Is that how you're looking through things? And it's good to ask yourself this question. Am I looking at this through fear? Am I looking at this through anxiety? Am I looking through this and looking at this through the lens of uh, scarcity? The fact that, oh my God, worry. Is it, help, is it making me contract or is it making me expand? Simple question like that. Or am I looking at this through abundance? Wow, another, another thing that's coming my way, fantastic. Or opportunity or of, or of a, a challenge, or, a, or as an opportunity for my mind to expand. Yeah? There's always this sort of um, scale of life conditions and mind capacities. Yeah? Life conditions and mind capacities. And when we, when we feel in harmony, when we feel good, our mind capacities are slightly higher than our life conditions, or slightly you know, at the same level. But when our life conditions are more than our mind capacities, when we feel overwhelmed by things, then it's good to stay, take a step back and ask yourself this question. How am I looking at this? How am I focusing on this um, image, person, situation, workload? And is it through the lens of scarcity or is it through the lens of abundance? Yeah. And just think about that now, just take a, you know, two seconds to think about that. What comes to your mind? What pops up in your mind? Well, yeah, you know, I do think of it as, uh, yeah lack, scarcity, not enough, I wish I had more, I can't do that now, I don't have enough, I'm not capable, you know. And the idea is to flip that switch, to think of it through, or to entertain the idea. Now, what if I was to think of it through, like I am in control, that I can do these things, that I can, that I can uh, uh, overcome this obstacle. What if, what if, is, if it was possible? How would you be? How would you stand? How would you breathe? How would you talk? How would you uh, communicate to people? How would you behave? And that you who would behave differently, bring it to you. 
that image of yourself who is able to handle, who's able to expand their comfort zone and work with, with the difficulty and challenge and overcome it. That person, that you, you have to bring to you. A little mental gymnastics today. To summarize, I think uh, we can say that, you know, the more we are conscious of the way we focus, where we spend our time and energy and action, the more we're able to shift and modify this, uh, this consciousness and this idea that, you know, we can, we can expand and we can grow. And the more we become uh, powerful beings rather than beings that are subject to situations that are outside of our control, yeah? Tomorrow is emotions. Um, and I'm hoping that uh, I can fit everything in. <laughs> but anyway, thank you for your time. Thank you for your uh, patience, for your, for your contribution and for sharing with each other uh, in the breakout room. Uh, I wish you well. Uh, for those of us who are gonna be here tomorrow, stay tuned and we'll see each other tomorrow. For those of us who are just here for today, take good care, speak to you soon, perhaps at some other point.